Okay, in this video we will be going through a very simple example to consolidate the idea of inheritance polymorphism and overriding in, in Java or any object-oriented language. Now, with respect to these concepts, they all bring about the, the powerful aspect of reuse. Reuse is huge in Java and it's what's made Java what it is today, a very powerful, relatively high-level language. And many other object-oriented languages are based on, on this idea of reuse. Uh, for a developer, a typical developer, reuse is big simply because it means that he or she does not have to rewrite code every single time a new class is created. Instead, you can actually build upon existing code that may already be defined in a parent class, for instance. So inheritance, um, polymorphism, um, they, these concepts generally speak about, they generally bring about reuse. And um, the example that we're going to go through today is a very simple example that deals with shapes. Now instead of just showing you um, a shape class or whatnot, uh, let's, let's, take, let's take the the shapes example a bit further. We're going to start a simple game for instance that deals with sh with shapes in some way now the I'm gonna take you up to a point uh, and you will let your creativity and imagination take you further to develop this game even further so the idea with this example is that you'll have an arrangement that looks like this let's say a grid of cells and um, just like those simple matching games for instance where you where you may reveal one tile and there would be a picture under the tile or something to that effect and then you click in another tile and attempt to match it for instance and as long as you match the tiles they they stay revealed otherwise they're hidden again so it's sort of a matching game that we're going to eventually end up developing but it's starting off with the simple idea the simple idea of inheritance polymorphism and overriding so the whole game is based on shapes so at the heart of it at the beginning of it all we have a generic shape tile okay so this is our generic shape tile and what our generic shape tile would actually allow us to define is the base class for all other possible shape tiles such as the square shape tile okay and the circle shape tile and the triangle shape tile Now these all inherit the basic behavior and state from the parent class shape tile. Now I use the term generic because that's essentially what inheritance and polymorphism um, are based on generics. And with generics, the power with generics is that you're able to foster reuse simply because you don't define too much detail in the base class which means that other details specific to subclasses may be fleshed out but done so in addition to the existing other details uh, already defined in the base class and you can keep on building this way so for instance a square shape tile can then be extended to to um, let's say the rectangular shape tile that somehow build upon the, the square shape tiles attributes to define a particular um, shape such as a rectangle and this can go on and on and on and in our case what we're doing here is we're essentially looking at the attributes looking at those things that describe state and behavior that are as generic as possible that are as common as possible to a particular uh, lineage of classes so for instance, we wouldn't put something as specific as a radius in our generic class, all right? because not all of our possible subclasses have radius, um, have a radius to define it. So usually what we need 
to do to identify what to put inside of our base class or parent class, for instance, is to think about all those things that are common amongst all possible other subclasses that may be derivatives of the original parent class. Okay, so in our case, we're we're creating a game, and we're going to call it our parent class a shape tile. Uh, we're going to throw color in there. And color can go across the board because any shape, regardless of what that shape is, can be described by a color. We're also going to throw sh sides because uh, regardless of the shape, it has to have at least one side, for instance. Uh, and the number of sides will go up beyond that. Okay, So we're going to throw those two attributes in there. In addition to that, we're going to um, get you're going to create getters to get the color and get the sides and then we're going to look at an abstract method now abstract methods allow us that greater flexibility as we extend and further define the lineage of classes so the abstract method that we're going to throw inside of this base class is called get perimeter now the reason why we're going to leave that as an abstract method is because the perimeter, depending on the shape, will be implemented differently, or at least the perimeter calculations, I should say. So for instance, the perimeter calculation for a square would be um, the length of one side times four, because a square has even sides. The perimeter calculation for a circle would be pi times the diameter, for instance, or pi times the radius times two. And for instance, the perimeter calculation for the triangle may be um, first side plus second side plus third side. So depending on what, how, depending on how the subclass derives this perimeter, that will actually determine the implementation of that original abstract method defined in the parent class. And it's okay to throw that method inside of the parent class because we can understand that regardless of whatever shape may may come every shape has to have some sort of perimeter but it comes down to the specific calculations of of that perimeter that defines one shape one shapes get perimeter method from the other but anyway so this is essentially our plan so let's get started with um, the code so we have NetBeans running. We're going to start a new application. We're going to call it um, uh, Shape Match. Okay. And we're going to create, in addition to our driver class, we're going to create our first class, which is our base class, our shape class, shape tile class, rather. Now remember I said that the shape tile game or the shape match game will show a grid of cells that look something like this. And the idea is to have the user click on a particular cell, reveal something, and try to match it with another cell that may be off somewhere. Now this particular behavior of clicking um, comes with a component that we've already um, used in our application um, which is the J button so our parent class shape tile will build upon the, the J button class all right and this is where inheritance comes in so we're actually building upon a J button class so that we don't have to write our own button behavior and button state so we're going to extend J button And then we're going to throw in our two attributes. Remember to make them private. Color and sides. And then we're going to create our constructor. sure to include um, 
sure to include our parameters for our constructor because we don't necessarily want to um, create a constructor without any parameters in this case. And you'll see why later on it brings out another example of, of these concepts that we're discussing. So our constructor is ready. It's a very basic constructor, and usually base classes are, are somewhat basic. Um, not in all scenarios, but in this case, it's pretty basic. Um, all we're doing is we're receiving the values that, that are coming in from our constructor parameters and are assigning them to our global attributes here. So now we get started on our abstract method. Now as long as we're using an abstract method, um, we have to declare our class abstract. Now a bit on abstract methods and abstract classes. Like I mentioned, if you, th if you think about the word abstract itself, it's not defined, it's not, it's not implemented, it's, it's just something out there that, that is somewhat of a notion, an idea, but it's not really tangible, it's not really um, clearly specified and that's the whole idea so you want to make a method that is not defined a method does, that does not have any implementation details within it and the reason why we're going to leave out implementation details for this particular method is because we want all of the child classes all of the subclasses to implement their own means of calculating the parameter and this is going to be our abstract method get parameter so it looks something like this, public <coughs> abstract double get parameter. Right, so we're accustomed to these curly braces, but with abstract methods we don't have any method body, okay? So instead of these curly braces, we just put a semicolon here. I was going to complain and say that, you know, this class needs to be abstract since we're using an abstract method. And um, that's perfectly fine. We're, we're just going to um, add the keyword abstract there. Okay? So this is our abstract method get parameter. All right? In this particular parent class, we do not implement it because shape is an abstract thing. So we proceed to insert some getters here. So we're going to insert some getters for the color and for the sides. Okay. And we can also insert some setters as well. So far, so good. So this should be this should be particularly familiar. Um, nothing too fancy, other than the abstract method that we have here. All right. Finally, what we're going to do is is create another method that describes the shape, whatever that shape may be, and um, the description of the shape can be something to the effect of I have so many sides, my color is X, and my perimeter is Y something to that effect. And what you find is that as the shape tile class is extended and implemented in, in various ways, this particular this get description method we can call it will describe the specific class according to its number of sides, its color and its calculated perimeter. So this method looks something like this.
Okay. So, just to recap this class, we have an abstract class called shape tile which extends J button. We're going to use J button because it's going to feed directly into our game and we need that clickable behavior on it. But in addition to that, we need other bits, other bits that generally describe any shape whatsoever and these bits are color and size, number of sides that, that may be present. And we defined an abstract method called get parameter and because we defined we we're using because we're using abstract methods our class needs to be abstract as well. So we threw that abstract keyword in there. And we said an abstract means not defined and this is exactly what this method is. Abstract methods and abstract classes really leave the specifics of implementation to the classes that extend the abstract classes. So you'll see later on that when we create, let's say, our square shape tile class, which extends the shape tile class, the get parameter method will be overridden by the specific method or formula to calculate the parameter for the square. Okay? So we'll see this in a bit. So let's right click here and fix our imports and try to correct any errors that we may have. Spell this wrong. Get perimeter. Get parameter. <laughs> Right, so our abstract class, our base class, our parent class, shape tile is finished. And now we can proceed to create our other classes. The first one that we can create is the, the square shape tile. And our square shape tile is like a shape shape tile class, but with some additional things. All right, so the additional things, just so we um, make it clear that we're building on top of the shape tile class, the additional things to describe the square shape tile class would be the the width, for instance. The width of the of the square and the height of the square. Okay. So our constructor looks a little different. Our constructor will take two arguments the color and the width. Okay. The reason why we're not taking the height is because a square has equal um, sides of equal length. So um, we're we're just going to copy the width to the height value and call it a square. So here's here's something that you'll encounter a lot when uh, dealing with inheritance and extending classes and so forth. That's the super method. Now the super method is really just a way to call upon the parent class's constructor. Okay, so shape tile here is our parent class, and we understand that the shape tile constructor takes two arguments, color and sides. Alright. What we need to do is instead of creating our own copies of color and sides, we want to pass the color and the and the sides that come in straight to our parent class so it keeps them in its own variables and we build from there so what we do here is uh, we pass our color because we can't necessarily predict what color this square shape tile will be created with 
and we know definitely the size will always be 4 because it's a square all right in other shapes um, this this number will vary in addition to that um, we have some other attributes such as width that's not present in the parent class this is specific to the square shape tile class now we initialize that and we said that since it's a square <coughs> the length of one side is equal to the length of all the sides okay so we just copy that with value to the height as well and make it a square now here is where we override things here is where we 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 specify we actually override the get parameter method that abstract method that was originally declared in our parent class shape tile get perimeter I should say perimeter. Uh, so stars are just like a definition um, public double get perimeter all right and Java's gonna say, you know, you need to add your override annotation. So we're gonna add that as well, just to make it very clear at the code level and the compiler level that we're overriding this particular method. But overriding in this case would basically mean writing out the body of the method. So we know that this square has its has its perimeter calculated by a certain formula and that formula is the number of sides times the length of one side and that's the perimeter okay so we will return that calculation sides times width okay <coughs> oh in this case size isn't accessible um, but we can do something like this we can say, you know, our parent class, in our parent class, we have sides here, okay? And we have our get sides method in our parent class here. So we can do something to the effect of get sides, all right? And that will be perfectly okay since we, since we are extending our parent class shape tile. So you see how inheritance is already making up um, for its apparent complexity. It's it's actually removing the need for us to to do additional coding to actually retrieve the size, and it's very very consistent in this manner. All right, it's very clean the way this is set up. So that's a get perimeter. <clears throat> in addition to that. We may want to add some additional things to our get description method. We want to say some more things. In addition to saying I have so many sides and my color is so on, that's that's a bit abstract. We also want to tell the the player that okay, well, I am a square, okay, with sides measuring A, B, C, D or something to that effect. Here again, we can override our get description method in our parent class and just and add that additional line Okay, so our get description method, we don't want to replace what the parent class has written, but instead we want to add to it. And the only way that we're going to get to grab that from the parent class is by calling the parent class's version of the get description method. And the way we can do that is by using the super keyword again, but we use it in a dereferencing mode. So this is what I mean. We're actually going to grab, first of all, we're going to grab the original description from our parent class by calling super dot get description okay that's gonna contain the original statement here okay and then we are going to override it by adding something more to it 
we're just appending to that value. So we're saying I'm also a square with sides measuring with Then we return. Okay. So that's another way that we can override, and uh, we're, sh we're we're seeing that we can override abstract methods that have absolutely no implementation within them. We can also override regular methods that have implementations within them. And by using the super keyword here, we can actually grab the value of the existing return um, value from the super class, from our parent class, and add to it if we wish, or modify it if we wish, and then return our own version of it in the overridden version of this particular method. All right, so that's our square shape tile. Our other shape tiles um, are more or less the same. So we're gonna, we're gonna shortcut this a bit and copy these we're going to copy from, let's say, these overrides here, just so we don't have to do that much typing. So we're going to create two more classes that extend the shape tile class, the first of which will be our circle, circle shape tile. And what's unique to a circle shape tile is the radius. Now a circle shape tile as well will take two arguments, the color and the let's say this the in this case the radius right not the width because a circle doesn't have a width per se and we're going to use a super method again just to pass along the color to our parent class and the number of sides now a circle just has one side okay and um, we're going to transfer the value that comes in through radius here to our global attribute radius. Okay. All right, so let's paste our overrides. All right. And in this case, the perimeter is calculated by pi d but in this case we're using radius so it's going to be something like 3.14 and we're going to stop there 3.14 times radius times 2 okay so that's going to be the implementation of get parameter in this case. Now I was complaining here with these underlines because we forgot to do the extends tile shape tile. Okay. And our description is going to say I'm also a circle with radius measuring radius. Now we can also include a getter 
in this case that's unique to this particular class that will grab the radius for us if we need to retrieve the radius okay so we've added our our getter okay and we want to do the same thing for our um, our square shape tile just add a getter to get the the width just to keep things consistent Apparently, there's apparently already a get width and a get height method um, methods in in the J button. So we're gonna leave this alone for now. Keep it simple. All right. So our circle shape tile class is, is finished. All right. So you can see here that we've added our own unique attribute radius to our circle shape tile class, and we are. Uh, we have overridden our get parameter method by putting in this formula to calculate the radius of the circle. And we've also overridden our get description method um, that has this unique addition to the original description submitted by our parent class. Now we're going to add our final class, the um, our final extension of the shaped out class for now. And we're going to call that the triangle. Triangle shape tile. And it's going to extend All right. Now the triangle shape tile class will have Side A, side B, side C as unique attributes. It's going to take color as well as side A, side B, side C as constructor arguments. Within the constructor we are we're gonna use that super and again pass the color along and we know that a triangle always has three sides Then we are going to paste our overrides and edit them. So we know that the perimeter of a, of a triangle would be side A plus side B plus side, plus side C. So we're going to put that side A plus side 
B plus site C. It's an overridden parameter. And we're going to say I'm also a triangle with sides measuring side A, side B, and side C. Alright, so I think our parent class and our child classes are ready. Are right, ready to build the UI around them? So just to recap here, parent class is a is an abstract class. It's a shape tile class, and you can just think of it as a very generic representation of a shape that contains attributes that all shapes have. All right. In addition to that, it has methods that all shapes use or may use. Um, in particular, it has the get perimeter method, and the get perimeter method is an abstract method. The reason why it's abstract is because we can't necessarily implement it at this point, and we're not supposed to implement it at this point because shape itself is very abstract in itself. We don't know how many sides it has and so forth. So we're designing this method to be abstract so that when they're actually when we actually implement this bet this method here, when we actually extend it in a child class such as a circle shape tile, we override that abstract method and specify how the parameter is actually calculated based on the derivative of the shape tile class. Alright? So you'll find that each one of these child classes has their own unique set of attributes. So the shape, the square shape tile has the width and the height. The circle does not have that. Neither does the triangle. Similarly, the circle has the radius, and neither of these two has radius. The triangle has side A, side B, side C, and neither of these two has side A, side B, and side C. And um, the one thing that they have in common is all stated here. They all have color, they all have sides, and they all, they all have access to these methods stated here, including the get description. Now the get description here is um, our parent class's implementation of get description. But in each of these, we have overridden it, but not in a way that it completely removes the result, but we've overridden it in a way that it adds to the result. So we're adding this line, given the specific class, whether it's a square, circle, or triangle, to describe uh, a bit more about the specific child class. And we can actually grab the original description by the parent class by using the super keyword as seen here. Okay. Similarly, the super keyword in the constructors here, the super constructor rather, here, accesses the parent classes constructor directly and passes to it the values that the parent classes constructor takes. So in this case, our parent class constructor takes a color and a number of sides given whatever shape is derived from it. So in our square shape tile, we put we forward along the color because we don't we can't predict we want we want to leave that up to the the developer to implement and instantiate with a particular color all right but we can specify that you know this particular implementation uh, extension of the shape tile always has four sides because it's a square shape tile similarly the triangle always has three sides because it's a triangle shape tile so this super method here directly forwards along values to the superclasses constructor so that those values can be passed into its attributes. All right. So the whole point of all of this is reuse. And um, you'll find that uh, polymorphism plays a, a nice role in keeping code as, as tidy as possible and keeping things, keeping objects as compatible as possible, as you'll see shortly. 
So what we're going to do right now is we're going to create the final class, the final bit of this application, which is the UI. We're going to call it um, shape match UI. Okay. And our shape match UI builds upon the JFrame class. And we're going to go through a simple imp implementation of it here. And what our shape match UI will do is it will create various instances of the square, circle, and triangle shape tiles. It will collect all of them into a common structure of type um, shape tile that's compatible with the generic shape tile class. And it will populate the UI with buttons, shape tile buttons, as you'll see. All right, so let's begin by declaring the structure that will hold all of our shape tiles. So this is what I mean by the convenience of polymorphism. We have square shape tile, circle shape tile, and triangle shape tile. Now, if we were to remove the superclass, which is the shape tile class, the generic class, that all, from which all of these extend, we would have to declare, we would have to sort of work out a way to interpret each one of them given their particular types. So we would have to, to distinguish square shape tiles from circle shape tiles from triangular shape tiles. And when we compose the UI and do interpretations and so forth, um, it'll be a bit more difficult because we're going to have to switch between handling square shape tiles to handling circle shape tile types and triangle shape tile types and so forth. But because of, of their common lineage, all we need to do is focus on managing the parent class the shape tile class and by extension all of the derivatives all of the extended all of the uh, child classes that extend the shape tile class are inherently compatible with that type so as an example here we're creating an, a structure that will hold a collection of shape tiles but you'll see later on that we're going to throw the square shape tile inside of this, the circle shape tile and the triangle shape tile all together in the same structure. And it works really well and it works um, the way we want it to work simply because of their common lineage of the shape tile. All right. Ordinarily, we wouldn't be able to manipulate all of them in a consistent manner through one structure if they hadn't extended a common class. All right. So in essence, all of them are shape tiles, are of type shape tile, which is a polymorphism at work. So let's proceed with our constructor. Here again, I'm going to throw the super at you now that we sort of know what that is. And this super constructor accesses the JFrames, one of the JFrames constructors, and um, one of the JFrames constructors allows us to specify the title of the frame. So we can put super and then put a title of the frame such as shape match. Right, like that. So we've set up our uh, shape tile structure, and now we're going to proceed to add uh, a variety of, of of shape tiles.
So we're going to put our color in because we set up the circle shape tile to accept a color first and then a radius value, some arbitrary radius value like so. Let's just copy this. We're going to paste it there and um, this one here we can change this to red and change this value to 15 All right, so just change it to square shape tile orange now you notice that um, our compiler is not complaining about the various types thrown into this common structure and that's because of our, our our generic shape tile class. All of these extend the generic shape tile class and by extension are all shape tile classes. Let's throw a triangle shape tile in there. Our triangle shape tile class um, takes a few more arguments because we have three sides to deal with. Do we have 12? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We need a couple more. <clears throat> Let's just copy these. Throw them down there. This is red. I think we're good. So we've added a total of 12 shape tiles, but we can continue to add more shape tiles if we wish. Alright. Now here we are going to um, proceed to set up listeners on each one of these shape tiles so that when we click on them something happens and for now it's going to be very basic so we're just going to set up an event to display the description of the individual shape tile whenever we click on the shape tile button okay so I'll take this opportunity to show you uh, another way that um, we can loop through structures such as these Alright, so right now we have all of our shape tiles added neatly in one structure. Alright, and we're going to use a for, but it's a, a modified for loop. Notice we're using the generic shape tile type, and again, this is uh, polymorphism that's helping us out. So 
So we don't have to specify individual shape tile types such as triangle shape tile, square shape tile, circle shape tile, which makes it very easy to manipulate all of these various types individually through one means. All right. So we just use the parent class shape tile and we can access every single instance of the shape tiles that we have there, whether it's a triangle circle or square or any other one that we create because they all share the same parent. So what we're going to do in here is we are going to say on each instance, on each um, tile, we're going to add a listener. for action performed <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is um we are going to set up an event to have the description of each shape tile, whatever shape tile that's clicked upon, to be displayed in a dialog in Java. All right. So this is another thing that we're 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 going to uh, expose to you with respect to the Java language. This is how we are, we can show pop-up dialogs in Java by using the J option pane. All right. So this is how it looks. We grab the the message, whatever it may be, by tile.get description. Okay. And something seems off here. Let's try to fix imports. There we go. So tile.get description um, grabs whatever description that's associated with whatever tile that we've landed on, that we've clicked. And we're going to use a J option pane now to display that description. In a in a dialog, something to the effect of a JavaScript pop-up dialog. It looks sort of like that. And the J option pane has a lot of options um, to set it up. Um, as you'll see here, there's so many methods that you can use. Conf confirm dialogs, input dialogs, and so on can be can be um, triggered by the J option pane. But we're interested in the message dialog. And the title will be um, information. All right, something to that effect. And that's our message is already in there for us. And I'm gonna modify this a bit. We're gonna say no message. information take all of that out use a J okay option okay all right that should do it okay so you can imagine that whenever a button is clicked it grabs a description as associated with the, the, the shape tile and it will show that description in a pop-up dialog via the J option pane. So we've essentially set up our listeners on every single one of these tiles that we have here. It's a very dynamic way, a very short way to do it by using a loop. All right? And this, as I mentioned, it's, it's, a, it's a variant of the for loop. Um, it's a shorter, easier to use version of the for loop here in Java. And in addition to this, we're going to capitalize on this looping to loop through and add every single shape tile to the canvas. 
So we're going to use our add method right within the for loop to add each tile in turn. Like so. Okay. Now we want the tiles displayed in a sort of um, a sort of a grid-like arrangement like this. Okay. And this is where we encounter layout managers for Java. Um, we, we've been using a, a particular layout manager thus far, and that's the border layout. But right now, we're, we're going to use a new one called this, the, the grid layout. So we want a grid of, uh, let's say, three columns by any number of col um, three columns by any number of rows. And to set a particular layout policy, on the frame that we have here, the J frame that we have here, we use the set layout method. And um, set layout comes from J frame and allows you to specify a particular layout policy that you'd like to use. Everything is objects in Java, so um, so we use a, the we create an object within it called the grid layout object. And that takes two arguments, the number of rows that you'd like to specify. Zero means any number of rows that you wish. And the number of columns that you'd like to specify. We need just about three, up to three columns. All right, so we fix the import on this grid layout. And you can imagine that um, as we add them here, they'll automatically be arranged in this sort of arrangement three columns, any number of um, rows. Okay. All right, so once that's in place, we're almost there. The last bits that we have to do are to set the default close operation. close so that our application doesn't keep running if we <coughs> close the window itself um, set size just set the size to uh, 500 by 400 uh, we're gonna set it visible all right so provided that everything is in place here <coughs> we can proceed to our driver class which is shape match and instantiate our UI here all right and compile make sure everything compiles just fine and then we run it and this is what we see here it's not much to look at but um, we see our layout policy is working quite well our grid layout and it's responsive in that way and um, let's see if our option pane works so we're gonna click on this and it does so he says here that I have one side my color is green and my perimeter is 31.400 so I'm also a circle with a radius measuring fives so we see that here it is again. Here's another value. I have three sides. My color is blue. And my perimeter is 100. And then we click on that, and we get some different values. Right. So that's sort of taking the inheritance polymorphism example of just creating a base class of shape and subclasses of circle, square, and triangle a bit further in trying to create our own game based on that. And in the process, we saw that generics the, the idea of, of generic classes offers a, a very powerful um, approach to development because it saves a lot of time, it promotes reuse, and it promotes consistency and compatibility among your various extended classes as we've seen here. We wouldn't, be, we wouldn't have been able to manipulate all of these various subclasses as neatly as we have done it here in this simple loop if we didn't have a generic base class tying all of them together. So this is polymorphism at work saying that a shape tile or a circle shape tile is a shape tile, a triangle shape tile is a shape tile, and so on and so forth.
all right so I'll leave the 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 further development to you this game is far from finished so I'll leave it to you to put the game logic in that allows matching to occur and if you would take a look at the J button documentation from which the shape tile itself extends uh, you'll see that the J button um, takes in icons and you can use an icon or an image icon to have an image displayed as the button um, instead of this blank uh, gradient looking um, button here so you can explore the J button a uh, the J button API documentation to see how you can embed a JPEG or a GIF image for instance or a ping image as a skin to this button here any button that you have here all right so that's it